Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining our virtual dental shadower session. Uh, we want to remind you that there will not be a quiz today, but you can find more information about us in our Linktree bio in our Instagram. All right, let's get started. We are very fortunate to have Sumir here today, and we'd also like to congratulate him on getting his white coat. So you can start whenever you are ready. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, Brianna, for that lovely introduction and for the congratulations as well. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Samir. You must be very familiar with me by now. Um, yeah, I again apologize for like last time. I don't know. I had some Wi-Fi issues, but it should be resolved by now. So, yeah, um, I'm a third year dental student at Toro College of Dental Medicine. And let's get started. All right. So a little bit about me. Um, I am at Toros, so I'm in New York. I did my undergrad in University of Houston, and I did my community college in Houston Community College. So basically, I went from Houston to New York for my dental school. Um, I am also heavily involved with ASDA. I have been since undergrad, actually, and I think that ASDA helps a lot, helps you a lot with um, getting to know you about more about dentistry and more like things that you normally wouldn't know in a classroom setting. So that's pretty interesting. So yeah, I'm, I'm uh, also their national ASDA member as well as my local district ASDA member as well. So that's pretty cool. I'll tell you guys more about it as we go on. All right, so one thing that I wanted to discuss with everyone was about the DAT. Um, in my opinion, the DAT was the most stressful exam I have taken so far, to be honest, not because it just takes so much out of you so many months, so, like you do so many months of hard work and stuff like that. It's just crazy. Um, we have our integrated boards, which is like more uh, like uh, like DAT on steroids or something like that, but I haven't taken those yet. I will soon though. So the DAT, they, you just, you need to be mentally ready for the DAT. It, I know a lot of people who take this very, very lightly and um, they just think that because everyone in Facebook or other platforms are getting amazing DAT scores that they will too. It's not like that. All of those people are working extremely, extremely hard to get the scores that they have. So you have to be very, very mentally ready for this. Now, one thing I would recommend is for everyone to buy the DAT and Math Destroyer. I use the DAT Destroyer a lot. I, I did every OCHEM Chem um, bio section of the DAT Destroyer and it helped me a lot. The Math Destroyer, I bought it. I did a few of those um, tests, but I honestly, I didn't, I didn't think it helped me too much. The math was very, very simple in my opinion on the actual DAT. The destroyers, by the way, are super hard. Um, they're going to be the hardest questions you'll ever face um, in your DAT studying career. So don't stress out too much. They're there to aid you in learning. They're not there to test you if you know the material, like if you know how to answer the question or not. They're just there to like make sure that you can uh, properly like know the material and stuff like that. So what I did for my biology preparation was that I joined this Facebook group that Dr. Romano runs. Dr. Romano is one of the tutors for the DAT uh, program. And he's also the person who wrote the DAT Destroyer and the OAT Destroyer. He runs their Facebook group. He's in New York and Long Island. And um, on that Facebook group, if you can get in, there is a PDF that he wrote and it has a uh, bio section over there. So if you click on that bio section, you can download the PDF. And I study that PDF. That was the only thing I studied, by the way, from a bio section, aside from the destroyer. That bio book is all you need, trust me. I don't know how he does it, but he knows every, he knows the DAT inside out. It's crazy. So definitely do that. Um, I know a lot of people study Cliff's AP bio, a lot of people study bootcamp bio of their own undergrad bio books. I wouldn't, I, I didn't do any of that. I just did his bio book and it helps a lot. Definitely do this. Um, oh yeah, definitely get the DAT bootcamp. The DAT bootcamp is one of the most important resources you will ever, ever get for the DAT. Organic chemistry and general chemistry are so well made in that, uh, in the DAT bootcamp. It's, it's insane. I also have a discount code for the DAT bootcamp. So if anyone wants, I can, I guess, just forward the code to 
uh, Brianna, and then she can just share it with everyone. Um, but definitely do get the DAT bootcamp. Um, they have these videos which tell you every single thing you need to know about the DAT. When I took my DAT exam, the bootcamp uh, videos helped me a lot. That's literally the only resource I used for my Orgo and GenCam knowledge. Um, other than that, the DAT bootcamp people are also responsible for making the PAT app on your phones. Um, what I used to, so I, I didn't, okay, so for the PAT, I did the bootcamp videos, but I didn't do their exams or their practice, whatever tests there were. Um, instead, I downloaded the app and I found that the app was actually more true to the actual exam than the, te than the generators that they had on their own uh, website. I don't know why, maybe it was just placebo, but it was, it was pretty interesting. So I did the app. I did the generator on the app a lot. Like um, whenever I used to like eat, I used to be doing the PAT uh, generators on the app. I, whenever I used to like before sleeping, I used to do those. So, you know, do it as much as you can. PAT is not something that you're born, like, like you know, that you have, you're genetically, like you know, it's something that you learn over time. So, and it is hard. It definitely is one of the most challenging sections on the DAT, but there is a reason for that. Like once you get into clinic or uh, once you get into sim lab, you'll actually know why PAT is important. For the first year in dental school, I did not really understand why it was important. But then when I started working on like crown preps and I had to like visualize the angles of my burr and everything like that. And I realized that, okay, yeah. So depth perception is something that is extremely important for a dentist and the PAT helps with that a lot. Um, reading comprehension, of course, also depends on how well versed you are with that section. If you are struggling with reading, then read Scientific America journals. They are tremendous. Um, I used to read them before going to sleep and then definitely uh, be definitely make sure that you read them fast not just read them so time yourself as you do it on the actual DAT they will give you a highlighter tool so when you're reading the RC passages just make sure that you highlight the most important um, words and then the thing is that uh, the the essay or the passage is not going to be there for every single question you're, you're going to, it's going to give you the passage, then you click next, it's going to give you the question. So like, you're going to go back and forth a lot. So make sure that you have the path, like you write down, like uh, you make the highlights on that passage. Um, that's going to help a lot. Um, so that is for reading comprehension. Um, oh yeah. And then one more thing is that whenever you solve a question, make sure that you know why you got that answer wrong and why you got the other choices incorrect because maybe sometimes you will be, maybe sometimes it, you'll just get lucky and get an answer, right, you know? And you think you know it, but you don't really know it. So just make sure that you read the explanations of all of these questions that you get wrong and right. I also did the DAT QAlt. DAT QAlt for me was an extremely good resource. It, it taught me so much um, of like every single, so the thing is that, uh, bootcamp and the PDF that I mentioned for bio, they build a very, very strong foundation. And you know, the DAT QL for me just filled in the cracks, if you will. Um, and it just helped enhance my knowledge. So it was, it was, it helped me a lot. It's just practice questions. That's it. You can take full length exams on the website if you want, but they were really good. And now when you're near nearing the test, I recommend definitely taking the full length practice test on DAT bootcamp because you need to know how fast you can actually write the exam. And that's very important timing. It's very, very important for the DAT. So make sure you are very, very good with that. Um, I know that a lot of my friends, they had to skip a few math questions at the end or a few PAT questions at the end because they didn't like time themselves as well. Because the thing is that when you're starting the DAT, it's not like a regular exam. Like like you don't, you get, I don't know how many hours anymore. I used to know it at one point, but let's say you get one hour, right? So one hour includes the science and the PAT section. It doesn't only include the science section. So like, make sure that you like, for sure know what you're doing regarding that. Um, then of course, you know, take the exam next day, review the exam because the exam is like eight hours long or like how many hours long. So, you know, take the exam, rest next day, review, then take it, then review, then, you know, make sure you rest as well. Also, one more thing, make sure that you make your own schedule for the DAT. Uh, I wouldn't follow any schedule that is available online because that is for the person who, that is for themselves, that is not for you. You know you better than 
you know anyone else so like uh, you don't need to spend a whole day do, doing like covalent bonds or stuff like that you you if you know it you know it just skim it and go for something you wouldn't know like ir spectroscopy or something like that you know um so definitely do that and you know that's it the hard the one thing i would say is that the hardest part about giving the dat what of taking the dat was the fact that i had to wait to take the dat because that wait is so so stressful like just make sure that um you don't freak out or you don't stress out too much okay and you'll be fine just don't get burnt out that's why you need to make a schedule so you're you have like breaks and stuff in between so don't worry yeah i spent i spent like two months i i, I don't really i would i well i wrote eight hours a day but to be honest sometimes it was less sometimes it was more so you can't really say eight hours a day like you know if you're doing eight hours a day of stuff that you already know it's not really studying but if you do eight hours a day of stuff that you know it keeps that keeps enhancing your knowledge and that's like a lot so make sure you're well versed with that <laughs> uh so believe it or not when i started studying for the dat i had a picture of like a sports car in the background it was to help me stay motivated because you know like dentists make money <laughs> like it's when i went to U- when i went to one of the ut schools in houston the dental schools there they uh there was uh one of the deans they he said that the reason why you're here for the interviews and stuff is because you want to make money but don't tell the admission committee that <laughs> so of course don't tell them that but it is like a very huge benefit of this profession but this solely should not be your only goal of uh, when you're becoming a dentist because the reality is so much more different um in reality you're going to be solving people's like cases now that i've started clinic i'm seeing like different cases different pathologies that come into the clinic and like you can literally save a person's life you can literally diagnose cancer and like save them if you know what you're doing so like think about that you literally saved a person's life just by being in the clinic as a dentist that's that's insane um how i say motivated was that i kept remembering about my one of my um research projects that i did with ut dental in houston um it was about cancer actually and we were trying to make sure that well i can't go into details of course but we were just trying to make sure if there was a correlation between the um antibodies that we found in the antigens that we found in the salivary gland and the pancreas and if they were linked and if they could help solve cancer so that's just one of the ways that you can um you know help in the field of dentistry the other picture right next to it is me assisting a dentist um this was the first time ever i've ever assisted actually in a dental setting um and this was in mission of mercy one more thing is that volunteering is super important so make sure you do that uh, mission of mercy was one of the most amazing events i've ever taken part of you it was the first time i ever held a curing light in my hand so these are things that you remember you know when you're studying for the dats like you remember the feeling it of being a dentist and like of like a patient right there in your chair trusting you you know it's it's insane so you know dr trevino i still remember her name it, she was wonderful she helped me so much and she helped guide me and everything in you know her advice was always just to make sure that your your mindset and your goals are correct and because if you keep thinking about like money or like other materialistic ideals that you're never going to be successful as a dentist you have to take it one step at a time and you know make sure that you're very well versed in it, all of the fields of sciences in order to be a successful dentist um so one thing i would say is that community service is one of the most important things if you want to do dentistry um i know a friend of mine who got rejected from one of the schools in texas because she had perfect gpa 3.9 gpa 21 dat everything was good but then she didn't have volunteering hours or she didn't have officer positions or anything doing re- with research or stuff so like you know they is you have to be very very well versed in your in your dental school application if you have a 3.9 doesn't mean you're getting in but if you have a lot of volunteer hours it still doesn't mean you're getting in you have to have uh, you have to have everything to be honest it's a very holistic process so I, yeah i volunteered a lot to, during my undergrad i shadowed three dentists that is what the, that, that is kind of like the unwritten rule um of of getting into dental school is you have to shadow three dentists um uh i shadowed three of them and i started working as a hygienist of one of them so it was pretty cool officer positions i did hold i think two or three officer positions during my time 
in uh, University of Houston, which was fun. Um, I founded the American Red Cross chapter of University of Houston over there. I was heavily involved with one of the pre-health clubs, Alpha Ed Alpha, so that was pretty cool as well. Um, and then I also did a lot of research with UT Dental as well. Um, and you don't have to research, of course. Uh, I know a lot of people who did not do research and they got in, uh, but it's just something to add to your application to make yourself more competitive, to be honest. But yeah, don't stress too much if you haven't done research. Um, I just tried my best to be well-rounded, that's all. But um, I don't worry, really, I did have a lot of free time too. It's not that I was just studying and volunteering. I, I had a lot of free time in my undergrad, so don't stress out too much about it, of course. So how I chose dental schools. This is a very, very hard thing for a lot of students to do. I highly recommend buying this book right here. It is um, for $35, me and my friend, we both uh, split the cost for this book when, when we were applying, of course. Um, it has information that you wouldn't really necessarily think that you would want. Like if you're an international dentist who wants to come into America, it will tell you the exact stats or whether, whether, the, whether they even accept international dentists in the first place. If you're an undergrad who is in an international country, they will tell you the stats for those as well. They'll tell you, of course, stuff like um, if you if you went to community college, do that, does this school accept community college hours? If you went to University of Houston, if you went to an undergrad, a four year college, I mean, um, what courses does this school accept? Like, for example, in Dallas, the that school in Dallas, um, they, they want you to have um, anatomy and physiology now, but the version of the, the um, ANP version that my school offered, they didn't accept that. So you had to go, I had to go to a community college to like even apply for the dental school. So it's just different. Every school has a different thing. Some need psychology, some need other things, you know, it's just whatever. So make sure you have this book. It tells you everything. What me and my friend did was that we made an Excel sheet and then we went through every school. We saw that this school fits my criteria and then I noted it down. And I kept doing that for all the schools. And then after that, after I had a whole list, I wrote down their tuition costs, their, you know, um, their program, how how new they are, how old they are, like stuff like that, basically, it's just regular stuff. And then I narrowed it down to however, I, I narrowed it down to like 10 schools at the end, and then I applied. Um, of course, apply to as many as possible. You know, it just takes one <laughs> to get in. Um, and that's it, you're a dental student. So apply to as many as possible. Um, so definitely, definitely recommend this book. Um, choosing specialties. Um, th so the thing is with me, when I first did my, so when I was an undergrad in University of Houston, I went up to, so UT Dental had a fair in my school. And then I went up to the academic dean at that time. And he asked me what I wanted to do in dental school. And I told him, I want to be an orthodontist. This was what, 2018? No, not 2018, actually. This was 2016. Wow, it's a long time ago. Um, so he said, uh, so I said, I want to be an orthodontist. And he's like, if you're so if you don't don't be too hung up over what you want to do right now because once you start dental school once you actually take those classes and once you see what kind of specialties there are or whether even you like specialties or not um that's something to consider so now that i am in dental school i don't want to be an orthodontist um it is a great field of course um but i just want to be a general dentist and that's that's just something that you just think about you know um so don't stress out too much about what specialty you're going to be choosing. I chose dental school because I just love the fact that, so the thing about me is that I was already in dental school. So I've been from Pakistan originally. So I was in dental school in Pakistan for a year. Um, and then we got our resident, like we got our residencies and green cards and stuff. So we came over to Houston in 2014. And then I started schooling all over again when I came here. Um, so when I was in Pakistan, uh, the reason why I became a dentist was because when I was getting my braces, the there was only one dentist working and his assistants were just putting the braces on. So, but when the dentist came in, he had his, this whole chart, this whole treatment plan, my whole 3D scans of my, my mouth and everything like that. It was crazy. And he planned the whole thing start to finish. And then he just like told them what to do, like minute details, like maybe basically like one or two minutes and then he left. 
And like the fact that he had like this much of an aura around him, it was, it was insane. I've never seen anything like that. So, and he helped me, like he fixed my dentition and it was, it was insane. So I want to do something like that, something that would help people. Like, okay, one more thing, never in an interview say you want to help people. Uh, <laughs> during my research, I, I toured McGovern Medical School and the academic dean there said that if you say that you help people, that's a red flag and they automatically reject you. So don't say that. <laughs> Even though that is true, you do want to help people. Do not, do not say you want to help people. <laughs> it's an unwritten rule, I guess. Um, so uh, yeah, so I just wanted to do something like that and just make sure that people were happy with their smiles and stuff. Um, something that I had trouble with in dental school. Oh man. You will fail in dental school, that's for sure. There is no one, no one that I know has has a perfect record in dental school. Like, trust me on this. Um, it, whether let it be a class or a practical or anything, you will eventually, you know, you will see the F there. And the thing about dental school is that all the people in in this in the in dental schools are like the this one of the most smartest people I've ever seen. You know, um, there's a reason why you are in dental school in the first place. Of course, you have to put in some work to get in but the fact that they are getting the f's or like even myself i have also failed a, a couple of times but it's it's about learning more of from like why you failed as to like like just ignoring the fact that you failed and just like you know going for a remediation feeling that and it's not don't do that like make sure you talk to the professor over how you can get better why you like did the wrong crown prep why you did the wrong uh, restoration, um, wrong endodontic, on endo, endo and stuff like that. So just make sure that you know exactly um, what you're doing. Of course, didactics, sciences, super hard in dental school. There, nothing can prepare you for that. But you just have to like you know be very well versed and be sure that you have a good uh, work ethic. If you have a good work ethic right now. Dental school won't be as bad as you think it is, but if you have a very bad work ethic, you're sleeping late, you're come, you're waking up late, you're studying all night long, you're not planning out, you're, you're cram, you cannot cram in dental school at all. This one thing I learned, you can't. So like, make sure that you have a very good work ethic when you come in. Um, a specialty that I have considered or would consider. Uh, so to be honest, I want to just do a general practice residency, a GPR, as they say. Um, the thing about dental school is that in, in, so in a regular pri private practice, you see like eight to 10 patients a day in clinic, you see like two to three patients a day, not because you're not fast it's because you have to get like your work checked by the professors. And, you know, it's like uh, the online softwares can be buggy and like, it's a lot, it's a whole hassle. So, you know, I, I personally would want to do a GPR program because I just want to be fast at what I do. And also like make sure that what I do is like right and correct. There are some things in dental school that you won't learn. You only learn them in GPR. Like, a, like for example, if you're extracting um, a tooth that's growing below the bone, like you yourself will never drill the bone. But if you're in, a, in dental school, I mean, but if you're in a GPR, they might let you do that, you know? So it's just about different exposures and stuff. And what my typical day is like. <laughs> So this is me working on a mannequin. <laughs> then D, um, right now in clinic, I wake up at seven, get ready, eat breakfast, leave my house at 7.30 a.m. And I'm, I'm in, and that, that's it. Like I'm in clinic till like five or six and then I come back all exhausted. Um, and then of course, it, that's like my regular day. But before that in dental school, it was like, you have to wake up early, you have to be in class, um, make sure that you practice well. Um, I'd say it's very important to also like exercise because you will be, like it's so good for your brain, honestly, when you exercise, it, you are staying on, sh you're, you're like super sharp and everything and your senses just kick in. It's really cool. Uh, avoid coffee, please avoid coffee. That is one thing. Uh, so many students are like <laughs> drinking so much coffee in my, in, in like dental school. It's crazy. Um, but that's not good for you. I mean, I can't really stop you. I, I most likely, if you are in dental school, you will also at one point get addicted to coffee, but it's whatever. Um, so yeah, um, I come in, I have a patient um, I work with my clinic partner. We set up the operatory. We, of course, everything is sanitized beforehand. We set it up. Um, 
put all the barriers on after that we take we make sure that if let's say if you're doing a rest, restoration where uh, we take the restorative kit and then um, make sure everything is ready for the patient. Um, since I'm a third year and she's a fourth year, my partner, she usually works on the patient. So I go to the front reception area, call out for the patient and they walk with me. And, you know, you're you, also as a dentist, you have to have social skills to an extent. So you have to also hold a conversation in situations where you might not even be comfortable. You know, everyone has their own space. So you have to just get out of the bubble, if you will. And that's hard, of course, I understand. But um, you so you have to like they teach you that as well in, in my school. So that's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, just do small talk with the patient coming in and they, they walk in, you seat them on the chair and you just get to work. We have a break at 12 where we eat lunch. Um, sometimes we don't even get a break because if the case, if the procedure is going on for so long, you just skip break and you just immediately start on the next patient. Then after that, it, it just depends on your day, to be honest, your clinic and everything like that. Then at the end, of course, and of course you also stay after hours if the case is like going on for too long. Um, and of course, um, you also practice in the sim lab. You pra sim lab is uh, like right now I'm in sim lab of my school. So I'm practicing on a mannequin head. They have plastic teeth. They cut very differently than regular teeth, apparently. Um, I did my first restoration two days ago and it was a completely different feeling. So that was pretty cool. So uh, yeah, uh, practice beforehand, whatever you're about to do, just practice beforehand, make sure you're, you read your notes um, because you'll forget a lot of things in your first two years when you enter clinic. So yeah. And then after that, like you're basically done for the day. I, I come back home. I then with my roommate, I go to the gym and come back again, exhausted, <laughs> take a shower and just go to sleep. And then that's it. My day just starts again. <laughs> So it's uh, D3 is more relaxed as compared to D4. So we don't have anything to study or anything like that. We don't have exams as much or boards to worry about or even passing some of this or because you do you do those in your fourth year. So we're just learning right now. So it's pretty cool. And that's it. That's my day. And yeah. Oh, also, if you uh, want to follow more about my, my uh, get to know more about me and follow my dental journey, I have linked my Instagram right below my pictures at some maybe dentistry. So that'll be pretty cool if you would. Um, but yeah, that's basically how my day is. And now I guess we can do a Q and A, uh, Brianna, I think, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll be starting the Q and A portion right now. <laughs> and our first question is what is clinic like at Toro? How do you find um, slash book patients? Okay, so it depends on which clinic you're in. Some clinics are very, very strict. Some clinics are very relaxed. The clinic I'm in is very strict, but not strict in the sense that they'll yell at you, strict in the sense where they will make sure that you are doing the procedure correctly and making sure that you know what you're doing, right? They, they won't just... They won't just um, some, so in some clinics, you just start the procedure and then the, the professor signs you off after you're done. They don't check, you, check your work or anything. And if you're good, that's fine. But if you are learning, that's not good for you. But So in my clinic, they check almost every step before you go in. My clinic partner is super good. Um, very, very, she has very good hand skills. So they trust her a lot. So she has more freedom than other people, I guess. So she teaches me a lot of things as well, but yeah, it, you just, patient comes in, you do a start check. Start check is basically you take their vitals, you ask them if anything changed about their medical history of anything, any medica med medication changes and stuff like that. And then if not, they think everything is fine, you get to work. Um, then after the start check is done and you're done with the prep, let's say, you call the uh, professor, or the faculty member, they check the work. They're like, okay, you can like restore this now or whatever, you know, whatever the final step is. And you do that. And then you call them again and they check that. And if everything is good, then you get signed off and you can send the patient home. Um, so that's basically what clinic is like. Some clinics, of course, hand, are like done differently than others. And I'm sorry, what was the second half of that question? 
Uh, one second. It was just, um, it was what is clinics like? And then how do you find slash book the patients? Oh, I see. So for me, um, right now, my D4 partner, she has patients from her D3 year. So whenever she was a D3, so her D3 and D4 pair, um, they would have patients and now they transfer, now the D4's patients transferred over to her her now. So right now she is the one who is operating on them. But in our uh, school, we have this thing called an intake rotation. Intake is basically us seeing a new patient that walks in. So they come in and we ask them a bunch of questions. We take all of their x-rays and after we find out what we need to do, that's it. We can, that's our patient now. So that's how, so it's, a, it's kind of like a rotation thing then actually like calling up someone and then coming to you. So my intake rotation is next week. So hopefully that goes well. Um, but yeah, that's basically, basically how you get patients. And in, in, uh, in Houston, you, they don't have this in Houston. You have to find patients yourself, um, which could be stressful, but luckily in my school, we just like, we have a very good workflow of that. Our front office is very, very good with this as well. And they make sure that, you know, everything is taken care of. So, yeah. The next question is, what is the class size like at Toro? Um, at Toro, we are around, I would say, 113 students. Some students, uh, some schools have like 40 something, some schools have 700. So, like, so we are only like 113 and it works out very well. Um, you know, we all know each other um, and that's pretty cool. We all see each other now because of clinic and stuff. So yeah, so 112 students for us. I believe the D1s are more, I think they're like 115 or 17, I'm not sure, but yeah, for us, we are like 112. What is something that you struggled with in dental school? Uh, that's a good question. When I first started dental school, I was struggling so much because it was so new to me, everything. We had biochem and we had a bunch of other classes and biochem was a different animal. Oh man, if you can, like, I, I don't even know how to give advice on biochem because it's so hard for me at least. So yeah, I struggled with biochem a bit, but then of course, as I got used to the scheduling and after like, like maybe a month passed by and I was in the flow and I knew what to do. And I asked a lot of people on how they were studying and they told, they gave me advice. Then I was like, okay, I know how to do this now. So um, yeah, you will struggle a lot in your first few weeks of dental school, like I did, but it's not too bad to be honest. Once you get used to it, it's a breeze. Another thing is when I struggled a lot in sim lab as well, when we first started, because you don't know how to hold an instrument. You don't know how to drill, you know, when you're, when you get anxiety, whenever you were told to like drill inside a mannequin head, like when we, we started by drilling on a bench top. And then after that, we started drilling on a mannequin head and that is so different. So like, you know, they just gradually like push you in uh, the ocean. They want to wet your feet a bit, but don't worry about it too much. Uh, for me, I struggled a bit initially, like, with didactics and some sim lab work, but after a while, it was it wasn't too bad for me to be honest. Like, one one that's it. You just need to have a good work ethic. That's all I can say. Um, and once you have that, you're good to go. Okay. So next is what would be your biggest advice to an incoming dental student? Oh, so if you're an incoming dental student trust me on this, just enjoy your life right now. Go on that Europe trip or like enjoy like your vacation because once dental school hits, you'll have so little free time to do anything. But once you're in dental school, um, make sure you talk to your seniors. And of course, be friends with your classmates. That's very important. Of course, you're with them for four years. So you will, of course, be friends with them. But talk to your seniors because they know they've been there before and they've done that. So um, ask them how they study. That's what I did. I asked them how they studied. I asked them how they're, how they organize their scheduling. Um, and gradually you will learn how to do that as well. Uh, just make sure that you don't stress yourself out too much though. 
it is a lot of course it is they throw everything at you just very very easy to be overwhelmed in law school very easy so just make sure that you know you take it one step at a time make sure you have a schedule um i use google calendar and i over there i have all of my exams there i have all of my classes there so i know exactly what i need to be doing and I, how i can plan ahead so you know uh, good work ethic sleep a lot do not cram at all sleep a lot make sure that you have a very good habit of sleeping because you some there are some nights where of course you can't sleep but you know that's this life um so yeah if you're if you haven't started school yet enjoy your vacation you know just relax as much as you can if you start school if you have started school make sure that you you have a very good work ethic and ask people of like how to just go about their day to be honest and of course don't be shy in asking for help it's very common a lot of people don't ask for help and you know you have to ask for help in law school because there are just some things that you just don't know or some maybe if you do know it and some other person does it better that just helps you at the end you know so yeah that would be my my advice and how do you deal with stress or manage your work slash life balance um uh, when i get stressed i so i go to the gym which helps a lot with stress to be honest um it you just you're just out of the house and you're just working out and just your mind is just busy not studying and like you know you're you're just having a good time uh when i come back i sometimes play video games sometimes watch sports or tv shows you know um just to get my mind off of things so yeah dealing so i do get overwhelmed of course i i cannot say that i have never gotten overwhelmed but uh just make sure that you are taking care of your mental health very very important M- make sure that you're taking care of your mental health very easy to get overwhelmed um talk to people don't be shy you know you, you definitely need to have a study group or a friends group to just have fun with uh and without my friends who I would I don't even know what I would be doing to be honest um so just relax you know you you'll get through it uh, there have been other people who have been in your same shoes there will be other people who will be in your same shoes so just take it easy one step at a time and just you know organize your thoughts a bit and then just tackle that obstacle and you'll be fine what is the exam schedule like at tura So uh, some schools they have block exams where you they teach you everything and then you go on one day and you take all the exams on one day we don't have that we have something like an undergrad kind of system where um we would have quizzes sometimes pop quizzes sometimes regular quizzes um s- scheduled quizzes i mean we would every 2 3 weeks maybe we would have one exam for that class i mean um sometimes we would have like like our finals week of d2 year at the end of d2 year we had like six exams if in five days so that was intense um but sometimes you'll have one exam a month you know it's just, it just depends but you, you will definitely have an exam every month <laughs> that's for sure uh that's there in undergrad i remember we used to have exams like every two months or three months but now you have like so many classes and it's just crazy but don't worry about it like you will learn how to manage those classes it's not as bad as you think it is the hardest part is of course like knowing the material you know um don't like just memorize just understand it that would be my advice too so you know just keep your head high make sure that you organize everything and just tackle those exams and you'll be fine <laughs> next is how important do you think it is to reach out to people in the dental community how do you have the confidence to do it very very important okay so as the for me i would not have been able to have as many uh as much reach as you would say as i have right now without asda i went to their annual uh session in st louis and we met so many different students there 
so many dentists over there. Oh my God, it was, it was amazing. Uh, building connections is one of the most important things in dentistry. You, they want to talk to you. That's the key, right? Like they, if they come there, trust me, they want to talk to you. Um, and they do seminars and stuff um, as well for to guide you, of course. How I gathered up strength, I don't really know. I just went for it. Um, I was a very shy kid growing up, so I wouldn't say I'm the most confident, of course, but you have to be confident in certain situations because that's what they look for. Uh, yeah, so I just went up to them and I just started asking them questions. The most important thing is making sure that you're not like kind of awkward or having awkward pauses, just miss it. So it's just treated as like a regular conversation and you should be fine. Um, without connections, dental school, dental school won't be hard, but you, you're, you won't have as much reach in dentistry as you think you would without connections, you know? Um, like, uh, I know a few dentists who are on Instagram. So let's say, let, okay, so let, let me give an example. Um, I reached out, so I have an account, I have an influencer account on Instagram, right? So this one other influencer who is a dentist, he wrote a post about how he has a CE program for implants. And if he wanted us to, if he wanted other people to know about it, just, you know, just uh, slide up in his DMs and just ask him about it. So I did that. I was like, oh, I want to know about implants. So what do I do? That's as basic as that. And then he guided me and he gave me links and resources and CEs for like free, which was I'm very thankful for, of course. But you know, this just you just have to like just reach out to them and don't be afraid of reaching out to them, of course. Um, you know, we're all here to help you. You can reach out to me, of course, at any time as well on Instagram. Um, we're all here to we're all here in the same boat and we just want to make sure that we all succeed. I myself have done like one-on-one -on -one FaceTime and Zoom sessions with so many down students. Uh, well, at that time, they were pre-dental students, but now they're dental students. So that was pretty cool. Two, of, two or three of them are actually starting Toro this year, I think. Um, so it's just, uh, you just have to just reach out to them and just, we are very friendly, don't worry. <laughs> we won't bite. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Just when, once you go and once you just have that foot out, the rest will be so simple for you. And our last question is going to be, can you tell us about a fun experience you had in dental school? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. We have had a lot of, we have had a lot of fun experiences in dental school. Our, well, I mean, I won't get into specifics of, our, of my friend group just fooling around. That would be, I guess, too much. <laughs> um, one one fun experience was actually I went to a D4 and I have at this point never seen a 3D printer and let alone a 3D printer in a dental school and our school has one actually no our school has like four I think so I went up to him and I was like yo it's in the wet lab wet lab is where you um, just pour stones and have those models and make dentures and stuff. So I just asked him, hey, what are you doing right now? So he just said, oh yeah, let me show you real quick what I'm doing. And then he went up to this huge mach machine which has like needles and stuff and different wires going in. And he just put in his information and he started printing and he started like printing out uh, a model, like, like the entire upper arch of a person from scratch. Um, because our school has a 3D scanner, so you can just 3D scan the entire arch and the computer itself will print it out for you. And he printed it out and it was so, it was amazing. And he let me like fiddle with the technology a bit and that was pretty cool. I, I always remember that, it was very, very interesting. Um, and then he's gonna, and then he's like, I'm gonna do like an implant here and a crown there and stuff. And he showed me exactly where on that 3D model. So yeah, that was a very fun thing to do in school. In in classes, uh, professors are going to, professors are also, very, like some of the professors are very lenient. So they're just gonna have like, you know, fun, 
like just fun times with you they'll, they'll post up a quiz which will have funny answers and stuff so that's pretty interesting professors will come up to you in like sim lab and just joke around with you i had this one one faculty member who would come to my row and he would just like tease us and like he would just come up stare at our prep and he's just gonna shake his head <laughs> we, we would know it was it wasn't serious but he would just do that <laughs> just to like tease us it was funny but he was he's like really really good he's amazing too um, so yeah, that's like, you'll have fun in old school. It's not all studying and it's not, and studying isn't too stressful or as stressful as you think it is too. So don't worry, you'll have fun. <laughs> all right. So thank you, Samir, for taking the time to talk about your experience. Uh, we appreciate you coming here to talk to us and to our viewers, make sure you check out our Instagram bio and check out all the information. And again, to Samira, we want to thank you and congratulate you. Um, and we want to thank everyone who came to the stream. So everyone have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Y'all are amazing. <laughs> thank you.